What is up, gamers? <clears throat> We're uh, back at it again with another episode of the Story of Kratos uh, story series that I'm doing. That is uh, going through all the God of War games in chronological order. Today we're starting off, starting the third game, uh, God of War, or I guess the third main entry, I should say, which is uh, God of War 3. It was uh, released in 2010. It takes place right after the second game, because as you will find out, the opening sequence to the third game is the concluding sequence, but the second game is right after. Um, if you, I'm not, they don't quite specify exactly when he returns with the Titans at the end of the second game, but you could argue it takes place during the second game because of, you know, the time travel and everything. It was the first uh, PlayStation 3 release, which totally utilized um, the PS3's graphics and obviously the more powerful game engines. It just runs and looks so much better than in than any of the PlayStation 2 or handheld games. Um, it was very successful upon launch. It was semi-early in the PS3's life cycle, as I found out during the last Epilogue episode for 2, that it actually came out right around the time the PS3 came out. It was actually the um, first game to feature the sheath animation where it actually showed Kratos putting on his blades, which was something I totally geeked out over when I was a kid. Um, it was the first game to utilize like combative items, at least fully. The second game kind of had that amulet, but that doesn't really count. This game, I, like, there's like actual items you can upgrade and stuff. It was the first game to actually do that, at least. I don't know Ascension did it, but this game came out first <clears throat> so this game is basically the culmination of Kratos's de-evolution as like a character basically he goes from this monster from the before the first game leading up to ascension he um was this you know bad guy general monster general who just went around killing people um he basically gained some sense of salvation at the first game but then he kind of just, through the gods using and abusing him, kind of became this monster god. So, uh, that's kind of what this game is, is the culmination of him, just his vengeance and anger and all that, just kind of coming to a head. And it has a very hard, thumping soundtrack, as I'll showcase here shortly, that kind of befits said destruction. So let's uh, dive right on in. Before the age of the twilight set upon the gods, a legend rose to claim his place among them. And even though Kratos sat on the throne as the new god of war, he was haunted by visions of his family, a family he himself murdered. But the hands of death could not defeat him. The sisters of fate could not control him. And on this day, 
The man, the legend, Kratos, will have his revenge. So yeah, there you go. Just give a quick little rundown of the main entry games, um, which are just you know one and two. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's one downside I think to this game is they all the cutscenes, most of the cutscenes in the game. I shouldn't say that. They replaced the hyper realistic cutscenes with those that little animation sequence they had at the beginning. They all they look like that instead of hyper realistic, and then there's the end game engine cutscenes which take up most of the game games uh, cutscenes so I kind of miss the hyper realistic ones but the second game only had a couple to begin with so it was mostly the first game that fully utilized that but I mean yeah pretty straightforward stuff there's a treasure section which you know we'll go over and um when we do the bonus content which I assume we get that by doing the challenges but whatever that's something we can do this later we're here to play the game, so let's play the game. <clears throat> My vengeance ends now. that ended the Great War and brought forth the reign of Mount Olympus. Born from the depths of the underworld, rooted in the river of souls, our mountain emerged out of the chaos. As it grew, 
so too did the might of the Olympians. He created a world of peace, a world of prosperity, a world that lives in the shadow and safety of my mountain. A mountain that has come to be the absolute measure of strength and power. is to be tested the mortal kratos seeks to destroy all that i have wrought brothers put aside the petty grievances that have splintered us for so long we will unite we will stand together and i will wipe out this plague olympus I bring the destruction of Olympus! The Titans will fail again! Yeah, they did the, uh, this Kratos and dialogue during that scene dirty. But obviously it doesn't matter.
Alrighty, uh, the chain of balance. It's unrivaled strength secures. No, oh, thanks for letting me finish that. <laughs> it's unrivaled strength secures the bond between the Olympus and the underworld. There you go. Which the game Chains of Olympus was referencing in this. <coughs> Here lie the remains of Ares, the fallen god of war. Which doesn't make a ton of sense to me, only because he exploded at the end of the first game, but hey. I guess through some magical means they were able to get some pit of corpse. Or the body was intact, I don't know. Saving points. I guess that's what they look like in. Uh, that's what they looked like in Ghost of Sparta, but they look different in this game, which I thought was. I don't know, I don't know why they did it. I don't know if something was kind of lame, but I guess that's just nostalgia talking to. It's kind of irrelevant.
Do you good? Not in a good way, obviously. Hopefully there was a checkpoint. I can't believe I have this much problem with the freaking intro.
I have heart is surrounded by an impenetrable surface that cannot be destroyed. Okay, just grip here and grab this so we can pull it out and move it around. However, if you climb up this bad boy first, there's a secret. It's like a we're Zeus's Eagle. Prize possession of Zeus, beat the game, use this item. This is the new game plus item. Yeah, I was it's hinting that Zeus was in here at some point, so it's like kids' drawings basically. It shows uh, remnants of Zeus's childhood covered the walls. Yeah, there you go. It shows us, I assume, his Kronos beating his siblings and all that kind of stuff. And the glory of this game. Lever or whatever to do that. Just spin it around. And you also move significantly faster. It just makes puzzle sequences significantly less for sure. Which I'm all game for, for sure. Combat got a pretty significant overhaul in this game, which is kind of ironic because you don't barely use it. <laughs> a uh, significantly less wall fighting in this game than the other ones. One might say that was electrifying.
Did you gotta check. Can block chart. That's fair. That's fair. I didn't think he could reach that far with that. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Hey, that was that was pretty cool. I definitely was expecting just the little right in front of him. That was a uh, pretty good um, AI on the character for sure. concept but there's a lot of just waiting around for him to finish the attack.
Zeus should have kept you where you belong. No matter how many gods fall, there will always be another to stand against you. They will fall as well. The death of Olympus means the death of us all. Then prepare for your death, Poseidon. That was a pretty cool sequence. It was from Poseidon's POV of you just beating the shit out of him. <laughs> can no longer hide behind the skirts of Athena. Athena is dead because of the rage that consumed you, Kratos. What more will you destroy? The hands of death could not defeat me. The sisters of fate could not hold me. And you will not see the end of this day. I will have my revenge! Excellent, child! I will tolerate your insolence no more!
as a god. Having suffered the ultimate sacrifice, I have been denied release. I, I will defeat Olympus. I will have my revenge. The gates of Hades have never held me! Death cannot hold those with purpose, Kratos. Athena? I have missed you, Spartan. I... I don't... My sacrifice to save Zeus has brought me to a higher existence. You still appear to be an Olympian. Appearances can be deceiving, Kratos. So can the children of Olympus. Perhaps, but remember, my death came by your blade. My blade was meant for Zeus. Be quick with your words. As we speak, the war for Olympus rages on, and mankind suffers. Let them suffer. The death of Zeus is all that matters. Zeus will not fall as easily as Ares. To destroy the king of the gods, you must seek the source of his strength, the flame of Olympus. You once sacrificed yourself to save Zeus, and now you seek to destroy him? What has brought about this change? I see truths where I did not before. Perhaps these will earn back your trust. These are the Blades of Exile. They will help guide you on your journey to the flame. Remember, as long as Zeus reigns, there is no hope for mankind. Destroy the flame, Kratos, and the very foundations of Olympus will crumble. There you go, Blades of Exile. These blades will be your most powerful ally against Olympus. So yeah, they're obviously very cool looking, but my only complaint is that they don't change at all. When you level them up, they don't change in appearance at all. They look like that the rest of the game. And I would have much preferred that they look at that level 5 or something and would moderately get to that point like every other they did in every other game, but what are you going to do? Another cool thing too is magic is bound to weapons in this one, so just upgrading this weapon upgrades both the weapon and the magic. And it's pretty cool. It makes it more expensive obviously, but overall it kind of makes it easier to upgrade stuff. Obviously assuming you like the magic it's bound to that weapon, which I personally do. So, Alright Hades, here's the end of the great journey that all must embark on, where none can turn back. So yeah, obviously it seems like every game with the exception of Ascension, you go to the Underworld, so... 
and goes as far. Now that I think of it, technically you can go to the end of the world on that one. But yeah, it was a pretty cool way to have Kratos lose his powers. Basically, go falls into the river sticks and gets it seeped out of him by these little, these little ghost things that inhabit it. What do you want to call them? Yeah, the special guy chests in the second game are the ones that give you eyes and stuff in this one. Which in this one, they give it's three of them versus five of them of everything to upgrade your bars, which I think is a better way to do it, honestly. Because I just feel like they were way, they were way too freaking many of them. I felt like and, uh, the other ones. damage now because our blades are low level. Which are X is how you throw them this one up here. Alright, Hyperion Gate. Those who possess a true soul of a god may pass. Which we obviously don't. Yeah, it's kind of worth grabbing these dudes because every brutal kill you get, the brutal kills grabbing dudes is you get roll of five experience points, so it just adds up. Alright, well that was an excellent stopping point. Obviously we finished the opening sequence of the game, and uh, we'll continue on in the next one. Um, so yeah, it'll be fun. I'll be round out the uh, Greek, uh, Greek arc, or saga, whatever you want to call it. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching live if you did. Thanks for uh, tuning on YouTube if you do. And I'll uh, catch everyone on the next one. Thank you very much.